Well, hello everyone. Hope you've all had a good week and hope you've been staying safe and healthy over the last few days as well. Thank you once again for taking the time to join us for another of our short Sunday sermons. And uh, I am going to try and keep things fairly brief today, so please, if you can, uh, stick with me right through to the end of the video. Uh, now, I think that over the last few days, there have been some parents who have likely breathed a huge sigh of relief as uh, the Scottish Government announced that the schools would be returning um, on the 11th of August. Maybe some of you who are parents are thinking that's still quite a long way off. But I think there was probably some huge size of relief across the country just to know that there is now a date fixed for when the schools will be going back. I think quite a number of parents across the country have found it extremely challenging to homeschool their children over the last couple of months and they'll be quite happy to hand them back over to the teachers when August comes. Well, I'm afraid today I'm going to take you back into the classroom again and I really want to go back to basics today and I want to tell you all about the ABC of the Gospel or the ABC of becoming a Christian if you prefer. One of the things I love about the Gospel is the fact that it is so simple. Even the youngest of children can understand the message of the Bible. I was just nine years old myself when I became a Christian. I didn't know much about the Bible at all really, but I knew the basics and that was enough. And so today I'm going to bring to you some of the basics as we think about the ABC of the Gospel. And so the letter A, first of all, stands for admit. You see, that's the first step. It's the first step in becoming a Christian. It's the first step on starting on the road to heaven. We've got to admit. We've got to admit to God that we have done wrong, that we have made a mess of things, that we have failed to measure up to his standards. We've got to be willing to hold our hands up and to confess that through the things that we've done and things that we've said and thought, thoughts that we've had, we have, we have been guilty of breaking God's laws. Now I know, as, as well as anybody who's watching the, the video today, uh, that nobody likes to, to, to think that they're in the wrong, never mind admit that they're in the wrong. But I think if we're honest with ourselves, and I, I hope that you'll be honest today as you reflect upon your life, uh, as you think back over the years, uh, I'm sure that we would all have to confess there have been many occasions in our lives when we have disappointed ourselves, never mind disappointing God. And there have been many occasions when we've failed to measure up to our own standards, never mind his. Uh, and so when the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, I don't suppose any of us could really disagree with that. Deep down inside, we know that that is true, that every single one of us have fallen short of God's standards. And so God's verdict on the human race is that the whole world is guilty of breaking his laws. And of course, if we're guilty of breaking his laws, we really do deserve his punishment. And it's not just that we, we've broken his laws once or twice, it's, it's thousands and thousands of times. Someone has estimated that the average person will probably have broken God's laws and sinned on more than one million occasions over the course of their lives. That's a lot of sin. And so the first step really is we've got to be willing to take responsibility for our own sinful actions. We've got to be willing to admit our guilt to God. And we've got to be willing with his help to turn away from the sinful lives that we've been living. But then the letter B stands for believe. Because the Bible says that we've to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ if we want to be saved. You see, the Bible tells us all about a saviour, a wonderful saviour. And it points us to a saviour who is able to rescue us from the power and the punishment of our sin. And it encourages us to believe on him. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. What does it mean? 
It means we have to, to believe, yes, that he is the son of God and that he came down from heaven. And that eventually he suffered and he bled and he died upon a cross. And he did that to bear the punishment for our wrongdoings, to pay the penalty for our sin. And so we have to believe that when he died upon that cruel, shameful, blood-stained cross, it was for us. And we have to believe that he rose from the dead on the third day. To, to believe in him really means to abandon all other hope that we have of getting to heaven any other way. And just to trust in him. Just to depend in, in him and in him alone for the salvation of our souls. And so we have to admit our guilt to God. We have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we come to that point of admitting our guilt and believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, we have to see, call, call upon the name of the Lord. For the Bible says when we call upon the name of the Lord, we will be saved. The Bible says that whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And so this offer is extended to everyone. Nobody is excluded. Every one of us can come into the good of God's salvation today simply by calling upon the name of the Lord. It really means just to, to reach out to him and to ask him to come into our lives and to save us from our sins. The Bible says when someone calls upon the name of the Lord, they're saved. They receive the forgiveness of their sins. They receive the guarantee of a home in heaven. And it's by calling upon the name of the Lord. Let me illustrate it like this just before I finish. Supposing you've got some kind of problem in your home and very quickly you come to realise that you cannot fix it for yourself. Well, you first of all, you have to admit that you've got the problem. You have to admit that you can't fix it for yourself. But then you have to search out for someone that you believe can fix that problem for you. And when you find someone that you believe can fix the problem for you, well, you call upon them and you ask them to, to come and to fix that issue for you. Well, in the same way, when it comes to the problem, the issue of our sin, the issue of our sin that is separating us from God and will take us down to hell, we've got to admit that we have that problem and we've got to admit that we can't solve it for ourselves. We've got to believe that Jesus Christ, the one who loves us and who died for us on the cross, is the only one who can save us from our sins. And we've got to call upon him. We've got to simply ask him in our own simple words to come into our lives and to take control and to forgive our sins. A, B, C. Admit, believe and call. I wonder if you've ever done that. I wonder if you've ever admitted your guilt to God, believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and called upon him and been saved. If you've not, I would, I would urge you today, I would appeal to you today to do it now. Admit, believe and call. May God bless you as you think about these things. Thank you once again for taking the time to watch this video. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch.